Welcome to day five of the uh, toy theater workshop. Today we're going to look at uh, manipulation of your puppets. You know, how to make them move, uh, how to make them do interesting things, uh, and so on. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and of course, I should mention that uh, we are all treaty people living on Treaty 6 territory. And uh, of course, the uh, also living on the traditional homeland of the Métis. All right, so here we go. Puppet manipulation. Hello, it's Jim. I'm here to talk about uh, uh, puppet manipulation, you know, or which is a fancy word for saying, you know, how does a puppet move? Um, you're gonna not see much of me until a little bit later because really this is all about the puppets. So let's get started. So here's a puppet that I made and uh, he's got a big smile on his face. And he's very, very thin. He's uh, two-dimensional. And uh, what I suggest you do is after you make a puppet, or let's say it's a found object puppet. Let's introduce some of the other puppets I'm using. There's a car. There we go. Uh, there's a forklift. Um, there's this little guy. A little chunk of foam and so on. So what I suggest you do is whatever you've made into a puppet, and anything can be a puppet, uh, you spend some time with it, get to know it. This is part of character development, really. Um, uh, Danica covered all of that, you know, talking about sort of interviewing your puppet and figuring out, uh, you know, who it is, what's its backstory and so on. This, uh, in terms of uh, manipulation, uh, this, this part of uh, learning about your character is just seeing how it moves. Da, 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 da. So it's very thin and it's kind of a bit wobbly, so you could use that. Hmm. It can even it can sit down if that's part of your story. Um, it also has a flip side, whoop, where it's very sad. Oh, woe is me. I wish I was happier. Oh, I am happy. Ha ha ha. So when you're making your puppet, uh, you can give it some uh, physical characteristics right away, like this one has a sad face and a happy face. So spend some time, some quality time with your puppets and see what kinds of things it can do and move and so on. And, and you know, the ways it can move. Um, the other thing you need to think about, which is also a physical characteristic, is its voice. Does it just have a voice like mine is right now? Or does it sound like this? A little more nasally and a little bit higher. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, but I'm very happy now. <laughs> Maybe it even makes noises when it walks, you know? As opposed to uh, another character. Uh, let's just pull up the spongy guy here. Maybe he sounds like... So, rule number one, spend a lot of time with your puppet. And then uh, once you figure out what its physical characteristics are, you know, the things that the puppet can do and, and so on, uh, then you can see how that fits into your story because story is key. So whatever it does physically as a character, um, it's got to, you know, make the story uh, better. It's got to move the story along. So let's look at this little guy. And uh, it's just a piece of foam. Remember I said, anything could be a puppet. And uh, I just added a stick to it and it can do some interesting things. Look at it, it can sort of twist, it can crunch down. Uh, it's also got a flip side uh, because in my puppet play, it actually goes to sleep at some point. You know, And uh, well, it could move all kinds of ways. Maybe it maybe it uh, it just sidles along, or maybe it bounces. Kaboom! Ba boom! Ba boom! Ba boom! Ba boom! Ba boom! Ba boom! 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 Which leads me to another aspect about movement. These are very little puppets, so when they move, 
they probably wouldn't move quite as fast as if they were really big puppets. You've got to keep that into consideration. So if you were to move this guy really, really fast, he kind of disappears for the audience. So when he's jumping, so instead of going, Hoo! the audience doesn't really get to see the movement. So maybe you could just slow it down. So I go, so I'm adding all kinds of sound effects to this, this puppet as well. So when he jumps, he makes this. And you see I've slowed it down when he goes up and then when he lands. And so the audience can see all the movement. It's all about uh, letting the audience uh, see what's going on so they can make sense of it and uh, make sense of the story. So what you're really doing is telling the story uh, with maybe sounds or movement as opposed to words. So if those two things work together really well, uh, well, you've got a great story. So does that guy. Remember I said, anything can be a puppet. I got this one character in my puppet show that's a, uh, well, it's a forklift. And um, in my puppet show, I think I just have him making forklift sounds, you know, sort of engine sounds. Beep, 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 Of course, it's a puppet show, so you can make this guy have a voice if you want to. What would a forklift sound like? Hello, I'm a forklift. <laughs> I'm a happy forklift. Or maybe it's a more of an engine sound voice. <laughs> I'm a forklift. <laughs> so play with those those sounds. This is an important characteristic of uh, uh, of your play uh, because if they have to say words and stuff. Um, you want to differentiate between one character and another. And uh, if they make uh, sounds, it just makes it more interesting to watch the movement. Um, some of my props are kind of like puppets too. This shows up at some point. And you can probably guess what that is. It's either a thought bubble and in this case, it's actually a dream bubble. So your, my character is sound asleep on stage and this comes down and uh, I bop it around just a little bit because when there's movement on the stage, that's where people will look. So this is pretty important uh, that they see this. So I just move it just a little bit. So in regards to that movement, it's kind of important that your characters move a little bit uh, when they speak. Yeah, well, when I'm talking, I, I, uh, yeah, I, you should hear, oh, whoa, it's me, oh. So when you have two characters on the stage at the same time, and one of them's talking, in this case, this guy, um, he's really says, well, uh, who are you? Oh, and as best you can, try to keep the other one still. Oh, uh, I'm a boy. Oh, okay. So that way, uh, you know who's doing the talking. So you're, you're, again, your audience doesn't get confused on what's going on on the stage. So you have a set, uh, which is your scene that everybody's looking at. And, uh, you know, that tells the story all by itself. But when your puppets move through that scene, how do they move through that scene? Do they deal with some of the props? Do they react to the backdrop? Um, and so on. And that way you unify the whole puppet show. So for example, oh, so where am I? Oh, oh, what is this place? So I have them walking behind the tree, for example, which uh, gives some sort of focus to the tree. And he walks, oh, and oh. I can bend him forward a little bit. What is that? Oh, I've never seen anything like it. It's like it's just a round thing. And uh, maybe I should wake him up. So you can come over and just nudge him a little bit. And you can bring him up and, whoa, oh, 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 who are you? Oh, 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 oh. So here, I kind of blew it, but anyway, uh, he, cause he's kind of short, I jump him up on top of the rock. I use the, the rock prop. Uh, to give him a little bit of height. So he's interacting with the thing. Who are you? Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a boy, you know. Oh. Uh, part of that interaction with the, uh, with the set, uh, for example, my 
One of my backdrops here has a hole in it, so I can act like a window. Or uh, I could have drawn a whole character um, on the front of this blue background. And then when they see the actual puppet, he's different. Or it could be like a window he's looking through. And then I could get rid of this one. And it could be like he's sitting in his room or something. Uh, except, of course, in this case, it's a pink dog and, and, uh, and a doghouse. All right. So don't forget your puppets working with the props if they can, if it, if it furthers the story. Again, all about story. So I'm just going to recap and talk about some of the things that uh, we talked about. And I'm going to bring along this little friend to help me out with that. So first of all, play with your puppet. So you make the puppet and stuff and then play with it. See how it sort of physically moves, you know. What does this particular puppet do? This one's kind of round, maybe it rolls. And we already know it kind of squishes up, which is kind of cool. And uh, so how does, that, uh, how does that translate into how the puppet moves? I think I'm gonna have this puppet bouncing. Uh, so, boom, 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 boom. And you can make sounds when it moves too. Makes it more interesting. Cause we make sounds when we move too. Uh, you know, if we're walking on a hardwood floor, it goes tap, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So makes it more interesting. Then, uh, after you sort of play with it and see how it sort of moves and, and stuff, um, uh, give it a voice. Give it a particular voice because, you know, maybe you've already decided on the character or maybe you haven't really thought about uh, what kind of character it is. But in any case, give it a unique voice because we all have unique voices. It could just be your voice. Da, da, da. Well, hello. Uh, how are you? Um, make sure that the puppet has focus. So I'll look at it. Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm not very happy. I'm kind of really tired. Uh, oh. And when you narrate, you're part of the, maybe you're part of the story, there's a narrator, um, or maybe you're even really part of the story. Uh, you're like one of the other characters. Uh, you can talk to the audience. You can look around and talk to all the people in the audience. But when your puppet is actually doing something, it, whether it be moving, um, look at the puppet, right? Because your audience will then look at the puppet too, won't be looking at your face. Yeah, that would make me very happy. <laughs> cool. So those are the things that you have to keep in mind when you're uh, developing your puppet, right? And again, story is paramount. Whatever the puppet does, it has to further the story. It has to uh, uh, contribute to the, uh, to the story because otherwise your audience just get confused at what's going on, right? So however it moves and however it talks, hello, uh, uh, whatever it does should be part of the story. Um, so that's what we had to say about manipulation, but, um, I, I should mention that with all of these videos, um, uh, we're just giving you some ideas, uh, wherever you take your ideas, that's up to you. And even in terms of, you know, making a puppet and so on, maybe you'll come up with a really great idea how to make a puppet or to manipulate it or how to make a fabulous prop that we haven't mentioned. Um, that's kind of what we hope for. We're just trying to give you a guideline to go by and uh, really the sky's the limit. There's no rules in making a, a toy theater or the props or the, uh, or the, or the uh, puppets or whatever it is that you're making for your toy theater. You come up with all kinds of stuff, I'm sure. Anyway, that's today's video. Tomorrow, we're gonna just uh, show a bunch of little clips about uh, well, actual productions of, of uh, actual toy theater productions, which we hope you will enjoy. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.